Don't be shy. Illinois University, what a pleasure to be here. What a joy. I want to thank Todd Harriman for inviting me. What I'm about to tell you, you've known your entire life. In fact, what I'm about to tell you, you've known as a child and even as a baby. For no matter where you've been, where you are, or where you go, it's with you every single second of your life. This, of course, is the beat of our heart. And in that same instant, we engage in a duet while we're inside our mother's womb, our heart beating with our mother's heart. So already, even before we enter the world, we are already in music, in duet, right off the bat. Even before there's consciousness, we are already in the spirit of a duet. And this blossoming of life unfolds while a stunning symphony of activity prepares for our birth. And when we finally enter the world and take that very first breath, a new member joins the body's orchestra, the lungs. So you see, we actually enter the world as a musical masterpiece. So I have to tell you, witnessing the birth of my daughter 
was revolutionary for me. I have a three and a half year old daughter. And I invite you all to recall that moment when you first held a baby. The instant my child entered the world, she sang her very first note, a molto fortissimo cry, like, wow! Huge cry. And the moment that I said, welcome to the world, Jasmine, in a flick of a switch, it became immediately silent. Her little tiny eyes looked up at me. And it was as though she was saying to me, so, this is the voice I have been listening to all this time. You see, we began listening from the very, very beginning. And from the very beginning of life, we enter the world as great listeners singing our song. And from the very beginning of time, nothing on planet Earth moves us more than music. Very simply, music is magic. And the three basic elements of music, melody, harmony, and rhythm, are easy to break apart. But without all three of these elements working on a masterful level, the music is not complete. You see, for music to really work, we need melody, melody to express its essence. We need harmony to support that. And finally, we need rhythm to bring its synergy. Now, let us switch over and look at the life of any individual. No matter what that in individual wants to do, these very same things appear. Melody for self-empowerment, harmony for the spirit of communion, and rhythm to create synergy. Now, um, Today we're going to be discussing how we bridge music to global cultures and humanity. And one thing that I think is very central to this subject is how we all get in tune with ourselves. Because until we're all singing our own melodies, and let me explain what that is, melody in the definition of what we're talking about today is your own expression of who you are. Now what's astonishing is that most people live their entire lives their entire lives, not really doing what they love to do. And of course, that's not really being authentic with who you are, what your gifts are, what your talents are. So one of the most important things, if I can leave you with any one thought today, that is the ability to find your own voice and to express it, that would be the, the greatest thing for me, if we, can, if we can all empower that. Now, as I get started with Tune Up to Success, which is what I call this philosophy, and it's a program that I've been doing now for four years, and it's based on the idea of a tuning fork. The tuning fork that I have in my hands is tuned to A440, and I'm going to need some help from all of you. Are you ready? Hmm. Everybody. Mm. Wow. We have, we have the beginning of an orchestra, everybody. That A440 is the note right above middle C. That A440 is the note that virtually every orchestra in the world tunes to. And the concept might be, what would it be like if before we step into any relationship, anything we get involved in, before we even begin to talk about a subject or something, we all took just a second, just a moment, to be in tune with the people whose company we're in. If we could all get in tune and all arrive before we even open our mouth to create conversation or to create music or to create any kind of connection, wow, what kind of future could we create if we were to do that? Now, in all the research that I've been doing about this particular subject, it's astonishing to find that 83% of Americans are not happy with their jobs. 83%. It's actually quite astonishing. Are these people living a life where they're singing their melody? I don't think so. So again, this is, this is a big, big message of today. Now, the other thing I've wanted to do is explain to you some of the things that I've been noticing is that the thing that every organization wants to discover is they want to find new ways to improve their own self-empowerment and new ways to increase top performance. And the other thing that I think is very important is to increase our personal value and ways to empower, empower others. And of course today, 
I'm very interested in advancing the very important mission of the Global Research Media Center here at SIU. Now we're going to address these issues by demonstrating how the elements of music can be powerful to tools to deal with this. And we're going to discover how the three basic elements of music, melody, harmony, and rhythm, show up and correlate in everything you do in your personal and professional life. Melody, harmony, and rhythm. The three basic elements of music. And I dare say, the three basic elements of success. Now let us begin with the unique signature of every piece of music, the melody. When you think of a song, you instinctively go to the melody of the song. You don't really think of the rhythm. If I ask all of you to think of the song, let's say, a song like New York, New York, for example, I'm not going to sing the rhythm. I'm not going to sing the harmony. I'm going to sing this little town blues. I'm going to sing the melody so that we can instinctively latch on to that. Now, throughout the ages, we find that music that, has a, that survives the course of time always relies on a very strong melody. Now, melodies can be very elegant and simple. I'm going to come over here. Here we go. Good. Thank you, Mark, for getting my sound together. A melody can be very strong and simple, such as, I'm thinking of uh, Gwen Stefani right now for some reason uh, when she did this at the Grammy Awards last year. Which, of course, is from Fiddler on the Roof, written 50 years ago, but she redid it and called If I Were a Wealthy Girl, right? A lot of people are nodding their heads. It's one of those songs that have transcended generations. Very simple melody. Of course, we were also talking about take me all on the road with me. You sound good. The bus is going to pull up in about an hour, and you all guys got to get your bags to your luggage together. It's a good sounding group. Okay, so New York, New York. Now, now, when a melody is that strong and that simple, it evokes deep memories for people. And this is why I say that the melody is who you are. It's not really the rhythm. It's really what your core is, what your essence is. Now, melodies can be very simple, such as New York, New York. They can also be rather complicated. Right now I'm thinking about uh, Chopin. Or they can be on one note, an entire melody built on one note. Have you ever met a person that they have a one-track mind? They don't really think about anything else but one specific thing, but they really focus on that thing. This is a song that focuses on one note. It's written by the Spanish composer Albanius. Can I get a collective ole? ole? There we go. Beautiful. All built on one note. That whole melody is built on one note. But you see, if you have a strong intention, you're very clear on who you are, you say, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a, a sanitation engineer. I'm going to be a rocket scientist. I'm going to be the next composer. I'm going to be the next whatever. But you're very focused on that. You can do an awful lot with that one purpose. So that's the idea of melody. Come over here. 
Now, the point of finding your own melody it actually represents two very powerful words that arguably are some of the most powerful words in our vocabulary, and those two words are I am. And when you're very clear on I am, everything else springs from that. When you are singing your song, you affirm who you are. And we call it the melody of music, but in your life, this is your strength, this is your passion, this is who you are. Now, there's a wonderful saying by Aristotle that can only happen when you're really out there singing your own melody. And the saying goes like this. Where your talents and the needs of the world intersect, there lies your vocation. That's something I wish someone had told me when I was about 18 years old. Because if you have a real understanding of where your talents are, and you have a sense of what the world is needing, and you find a place where those two paths cross each other, boom, there's your purpose. It can help you an awful lot in finding the direction. One thing that we're very sure of, I, I had a, a wonderful dinner last night with Todd and with Jay, who's a, what part of your department here. It's just been a joy to work with them and meet with them. And we were discussing the word convergence, and that this is one of the big words of where the world is at today, the entire convergence of media, technology, cultures. And the one thing that is very good to find when you're in a world that has so much going on, such a, a high degree of almost, on one level, chaotic complexity, because there's an awful lot of that going on, is to figure out where you're centered in. So finding your melody is key to this. And several years ago, um, I was on the road. I was playing with Al Jarreau in Europe. And it was a very cold, rainy day. I was in the country of Belgium. And we were playing a jazz concert in a very, very, very stormy, stormy day. And uh, I was about to follow the performance of one of the late, great jazz musicians of all time. His name is Milt Jackson. He played the vibes. And he was unbelievable. Um, and I had just met him. I found him. I found his elegant manner very, very striking. He was dressed in a you know beautiful, beautiful navy blue suit with this beautiful tie, crisp white shirt. He had gold cufflinks on. Seventy-eight years old. This icon of jazz, in spite of him looking very frail, looked like he was about to address a board meeting for a Fortune 500 company. But for him, he was about to do something just as important. He was going to go out get in front of the audience and express his melody. So he immediately, you know, we shook hands, he walked out on stage, got to the vibes, pulled out his mallets, and he started to play. As he began to play, the storm got much more intense. In fact, I could see absolute black thunderheads forming over him. Even the crowd had busted open their umbrellas. There were about 2,000 seas of umbrellas that went up. And within seconds, there was this gigantic cloudburst. And it was one of those rains where the rain was coming down at 45 degrees. And it was hitting the stage. And he was, his vibes were on the stage. And here he is. He's 79. He's out there. He's playing away. And I could see the cufflinks, I could see his sleeves, I could see everything starting to get soaking wet. You would think the guy would stop. But as it rained more and more, and as he got more wet, he actually played better. He started playing, you know, um, so incredible to watch this master weave and weave and weave. And the crowd stood awestruck. And the moment he played his final note, the crowd roared into applause. I mean, roared into applause. It actually drowned out the thunder that was happening over the whole scene. And that day, that man taught us something that I very much want you all to be aware of. And that man showed us that when you really know your melody, you can play through any storm. That's the key. So Milt Jackson, you might want to check him out.
Google Milt Jackson, everybody. Very important to know about some of the, the great late American jazz masters. Now, I want to ask you all a question here. How many of you here in this room believe that you have music inside of you? Man, everybody's hand should be up, huh? right? OK, all of us have music inside of us. And what's really wonderful is that what we're going to do is actually reveal of how melody, harmony, rhythm inside of your lives can actually be tools for success, OK? Let us begin with the unique signature of the song. And let us begin with the idea that we all have our own unique melody. Now, you've got a melody. She's got a melody. I've got a melody. But if we all don't think about harmony, we're destined to clash, OK? Now, at the count of three, what I'd like you all to do is I want you all to sing your melody. I mean, whatever it is. But I want you to sing really loud. I don't want you to be shy about this, OK? I want this, I want this wood over here and these curtains over here to kind of shake a little bit. Everyone, everyone's going to sing their melody, OK? On the count of three, one. Two, three. There we go, there we go. <laughs> yeah, OK, good. Sounds really good. Everyone's expressing their own melody. The only problem is I don't hear any harmony at all. And there's no rhythm, right? So what we got to do now is talk about where the harmony is, OK? And it's, it's really funny. There's, there's a saying that, that, that you may have heard. And the saying goes like this, God once said that, we were given two ears, but one mouth, because God said that listening was twice as hard as talking, right? It's an important concept, because that, that's commonly what happens. And, you, and we can't be mad at ourselves for the way we tend to listen, because human beings are wired in a very special way. We tend to think at a rate of about 600 words a minute, average human being. And the average amount of words that we speak in a conversation is about 150 words a minute. Now, some people speak more than 600 words a minute. Some people talk like this, they go, they go, and they speak 1,000 words a minute, right? But here's the deal. The mind goes at 600 to 1,000. So when somebody says something to you at 150 words per minute, you're thinking four to six, seven times faster than they're capable of even hearing. You know? And what, what typically happens is somebody says, uh, you know, someone is explaining a, a subject to you, and you as the listener, you might be thinking, well, that's interesting, but you know, I gotta, I gotta swing by the donut store, and uh, I gotta stop at the dry cleaners, and uh, God, I gotta get home and do my homework, and I gotta, I got five calls and seven emails to return, and, and that typically is what happens. And very often, within a minute after someone tells you something, and this is for all human beings, 50% of it is forgotten, completely. I mean, there's this gigantic hole, this black hole of life, where we are absolutely missing melodies, harmonies, and rhythms. Now, in music, you, can't, you, can, you couldn't even begin to perform music successfully if you're not at 100% present level with your listening. And um, what I'd like to share with you is something that speaks to the way we listen to cultures. Because again, today's subject is how we bridge this concept of music to cultures. And there's a piece of music I'd like to share with you. And I just learned that we have a hip hop class in this room. Is that right? Yeah, all right. I got some hip hop people here. What's, it, what's also incredible uh, is, is in this rather intimate group, I've also learned that there's a, a lady uh, who represents a flamenco society. Am I right? Is that right? Flamenco music. And uh, which I find absolutely amazing because the song that, uh, <coughs> that I want to share with you now is an original piece of music that I wrote about a year and a half ago with the premise that what would it be like if we could mix flamenco music from Spain with hip hop from America? What would that be like? Hip hop and flamenco, well let's see, why don't we call it, first of all, let's give it a name. How about flip hop? <laughs> right, flamenco meaning hip hop. And to do this right, I need, I need to get a really cool rapper because rap is not my expertise. I, don't, I have limited ability with rap. But I, I figured I'm going to call somebody really, really great. And I found a gentleman from, from Chicago. And uh, he lives out in Los Angeles. His name is Old School. And he's from the Kanye West camp. He knows Kanye personally, was trained with Kanye. And he wrote uh, the, the rap on this. And I'd like to share with you now. It's a piece of music called Flip Hop. I'm going to go over here to this Macintosh and see if I can get it up on the screen for you. Uh, mouse. Here we go.
Can everyone see that pretty good? Yeah, sort of? <laughs> Is it hard to see? Yeah. It's really hard to see. Well, OK. Uh, gee, this is, um, do your best. It's, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of it. But here's the idea. How do we take something as contemporary as hip hop and merge it with something as ancient as flamenco? How do we do that? How, how might we do this? And how do we celebrate and respect both seemingly different cultures, something that's born out of an urban expression uh, all the way to something uh, uh, from the passionate Andalusian Espanol, la música de España. How do we how do we merge those two together? So this is this is what the uh, what we're attempting to do here. So here it is. This is flip hop. Oops. Okay, flip hop. <laughs> Thank you very much. A little, a little bit in Chicago in there. You folks see that lyric about the Chi Town coal? <laughs> it was, uh, you know, we're in LA, so when we see that lyric, we go, wow, that's only that can come from this part of the country, right? And that's what it's all about. You know, how do you, how do you merge with people from all walks of life and find ways to connect the music? And uh, Flip Hop, this particular tune, is, uh, we're, we're, it's headed for being the title track of, uh, of my next album. Uh, because we're very interested in proliferating this kind of message. How do we reach out across the globe and connect the dots? And uh, th that's a big, big part of it. Now, there's another thing I'd like to share with all of you. Uh, many of you may already know this. Uh, uh, those of you in music, I hope you know about this. It's the 250th anniversary of the music of Mozart. Uh, January 27th um, marks the 250th birthday of uh, Amadeus. And uh, the whole world is in great celebration, of course, uh, of the amazing, unbelievable legacy of music that this man le uh, left us in his short 32, 33 years on the planet. I mean, it's just incredible. And uh, since today's talk is based on bridging cultures, 
I started thinking, what if we wrote, took a piece of Mozart, okay, of Mozart's music, and did something with it that was kind of new, something different, and at the same time still honored the melodies and the music that he left us. And I started thinking about a piece of music called the Turkish March. Um, it goes like this. That piece of music, okay? What if we took that piece of music and did something really different with it? What if we took Mozart, you know, with his powdered wig, you know, and his, you know, his puffy shirts and everything, and we just threw him on a plane and flew down to Cuba and dropped him off in Havana, and he hung out in <laughs> Cuba for a while. And he got into the whole Cuban thing and decided to really meld those rhythms together. What would happen? What if we could do that? So uh, this a little arrangement, uh, the piece, the original piece of music is Rondo a la Turca. I call this Rondo a la Salsa. <laughs> Here it is. If I can find this. How's everyone feeling? <laughs> I hope Mozart's not turning over in his grave. You know? <laughs> ah, you know. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do that. I, uh, about two months ago, I was in uh, Los Angeles uh, playing, actually in Anaheim, playing at the Anaheim Convention Center, and I did this piece of music for an Austrian piano company called Busendorfer, which uh, arguably makes uh, some of the finest pianos in the world. And they've been in Austria for 178 years making pianos. And of course, Mozart is Austria's most famous son. And uh, I was thinking, oh my god, this is almost sacrilegious for me to do this in front of these folks, you know? And they went crazy. They loved it. So, uh, so 
I only share that for you just to say, you know, connecting global cultures and breaking boundaries and trying new things is what it's all about. And we live in an incredible time right now through the internet and through all the different social networking sites and through just the incredible cross-pollinization that we're in right now as a human race that there's extraordinary possibilities out there. But it all comes down to finding your own melody. Because once you find that, then you start to lead to the tools that lead to harmony. Okay? In fact, I was thinking one thing that's very important as we speak about harmony is, in speaking about Mozart, we have melodies that can actually be the way, remember we were speaking about listening skills, and that the only way to get harmony is if you're actually listening to someone's melody, because if you're not hearing them, you will not harmonize with them. Let's say, um, let's say, uh, this young lady with the glasses, what's your name? Tasha. Tasha, okay, let's say Tasha comes up to me and Tasha says, uh, well here, let me ask you, Tasha, uh, my name's Freddie and my, my melody goes like this, beep, be dee be dee be dee be dee dee what kind of melody do you have? What's your melody? Go ahead. Uh, what do you want me to harmonize? Whatever you, no, no. Whatever you feel. Anything. Um, Let's give a round of applause for Tasha. Come on! Thank you. I can see we're going to have to do some bebop after this is over, yeah. Tasha. So, so Tasha comes to me with this melody. Beep, be dee be dee be dee be dee dee. Okay? Now, let's... Put this, we were just talking about Mozart, and I'm thinking, why don't, we, why don't we throw this into a Mozart paradigm? Tasha comes to me very strong with her melody. She's very clear on who she is. She tells me something that's really profound and provocative. She comes in and goes, Freddie, this is what I feel today. I mean, why not? Okay, she's feeling good, very strong, okay. But as she's talking to me, I'm not really present. I'm, I'm off on 10 different things. And I'm going, OK. And I'm harmonizing with her. I'm hearing her. And I'm going. That kind of thing. Now, I would venture to say that 99% of human interaction, that's pretty much what's going on. People are hearing each other. People are coming to each other with ideas. But there's this sort of lack of presence that's going on. Call it distractions, call it multitasking, call it, you know, web blogs and emails and cell phones and I gotta check this, I gotta check that, I gotta get over there. Oh, I'm getting a buzz. Oh, excuse me, I gotta stop. All the distractions we all live in every day is not helping my ability to hear what Tasha's doing. So often, much of the skill has to do with something very subtle. We just have to change our level of attention ever so slightly. It's not a big tweak, it's just a subtle one. And instead of me just sort of listening to Tasha, I actually make a conscious effort to hear her melody. And of course we get. And so on. In other words, harmony, okay? This is the kind of adjusting we all have to do. Now what's another interesting thing is as we get into the way people harmonize with one another, we can also start to think about the next step, which is rhythm. There was a wonderful thing that uh, Duke Ellington said. He wrote an amazing piece of music, and uh, it goes like this. Anyone can name that song? Thank you, darling. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing, right? And you know what? He was really saying something rather profound there. He was actually saying exactly what I'm saying today. He was basically saying, you know, you could have melodies going on and harmonies going on. In fact, let me see. I'm going to take this melody, right? And I think the harmony goes something like... Okay, so we got our melody, right? We got our harmony. Let's see what happens.
What's wrong? <laughs> ain't nothing going on. There ain't no swing. There's no rhythm. So if there's no rhythm going on, it don't matter how, how good the melody is. It doesn't even matter how good the harmony is. If there's no rhythm going on, and to speak to it in more contemporary terms, because I know we got a hip-hop class here, I know we got music people here, it ain't grooving. And if it's not in the groove, if it's not in the pocket, you know when you have a band and the band is really killing, they're just fantastic, but the drummer's not happening? You could have the greatest lead singer in the world. You could have this killer guitar player. You could have this amazing keyboard guy, killer bass player, but if the drummer's not there, the whole thing falls apart, right? Well, it's that way in just about everything else. And if you think about it, if we as an organization are expressing our melody, we're all listening to each other at a very high level and there's a form of harmony, and we all decide that we're really going to march to the beat of the same drummer, all of a sudden you have... <laughs> Yourself a round of applause. <laughs> it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And in fact, it don't mean a thing if we ain't listening. Now, I'd like to see if I could uh, have a, uh, a volunteer. Did anybody want to stick up their hands and, and not be shy? And uh, anybody? Anybody. Come on, come on, come on. Please come. What's your name, my dear? CJ. Everyone, a round of applause for CJ. <laughs> Give her some love. Hi, CJ. Hi, nice now, it's a pleasure to meet you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let me get this for you here. Okay. We're going to do something right now. We're going to actually talk a little bit about active listening right now. There's a skill called active listening, and this is the way we get to harmony, okay? And we're going to perform an opera, if that's okay with you, CJ. That's fine. Beautiful. <laughs> we're going to do an opera. It's a very special opera. It's called The Passive Listener of Carbondale. And it's going to star CJ. And in fact, this is a really famous work we're going to do for you because it's actually performed every second of every day throughout the world. OK? And what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about music in general. Music is filled with different question and answer things. In fact, professors of music call it question and answer. For example, if we take that song, Your Mama Don't Dance and Your Daddy Don't Rock and Roll, right? The answer is, your mama don't dance and your daddy don't rock and roll. The horns go bump, thump, gum. Duke Ellington, right? Duke Ellington wrote, uh, don't get around much anymore, right? I miss the Saturday dance. The answer is, ba da 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 Question, I heard they crowded the floor, da 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 right? Mozart, question, da 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 Answer, da 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 in fact, music is absolutely filled. Most of the music that we all listen to, that we all embrace, that we all love, is absolutely filled with this balance. In fact, there's another piece I'm thinking of uh, by Strauss, who wrote the very famous Waltz, The Blue Danube, right? And the question is, dun, da, dun, dun, dun. And the answer is? Dun, 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 dun. There we go, beautiful. So, in fact, that's what we're going to do. Why don't we take the Blue Danube, subject? And we're going to perform, again, the passive listener of Carbondale. And I'm going to play the role of the passive listener, OK? And CJ is going to play the role of the person who's coming to me very clear with who she is and what her melody is, OK? All right, so you're going to, here, here it is. We're going to do this just like rehearsal, right, CJ? OK. OK, so I have an idea. You're going to do that, OK? OK. okay. Ready? Go ahead. I have an idea. Oh, no. I'm late. It's bigger than life. This better be great. It could change the world. I've heard this before. It could end the strike. You know, I should have gone to the dry cleaners again. I, I, I got to swing by and get some gas and, OK, what, what, what we're happening, what's happening in this conversation, do, does anyone recognize this kind of conversation in daily life? All the time. Happens constantly, OK? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know, we've got a lose-lose situation here. 
And what we'll have to do is present something new different. We're going to now present a very rare performance of the active listener of Carbondale, and for that matter, the active listener of anything. And we're going to call this, again, the Blue Danube. Are you ready? Yeah. Go ahead. I have an idea. You have my ears. It's bigger than life. I'm fully here. It could change the world. Please tell me more. It could end all strife. That's what I live for. Everybody, round of applause for CJ, huh? Thank you, darling. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're going to get a bus to pull up and, and, and take you all on the road with me. I got a blues singer over here. I got CJ. I got New York, New York. And I got my choir. Uh, now, see, what, what's really special, though, and the case in point, is that we have a win-win situation. Just now, I really got to hear what CJ had to say. And if you think about it, I receive a message that actually empowers me. I, I get what she's saying. It enhances my life. And since I was responsive to her, CJ knows that she can come to me in the future and go, wow, you know, when I go to, that, when I go to Freddie, he actually listens to me. I'm going to bring more ideas to him. So we actually open up the door of communication on a brand new level. All right? So we have our melody. We have our harmony. We've talked about rhythm. And we've talked about the fact that rhythm is actually a synergy. And uh, the definition of synergy is where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Very, very classic definition of synergy. And that's exactly what happens in music. When you actually create pieces of music where it's all coming together, let's say you go out and you hear a group of three or four musicians performing, if they're really playing well together, they sound like more than three or four people. They sound like five or six people because the level of listening is so, so high. Now, this is really no different for you or your colleagues. You can have empowered in individuals who sing their own melody and know how to harmonize together. And when we add rhythm, we all march to the beat of the same drummer. And uh, what I'd like to share with you now is a piece of music that came together in my life when I had all the elements really working and synergy really came together. Uh, this is a piece of music that comes from my last album uh, called Sunny Side Up. And uh, it was launched in Philadelphia. And then WNUA in Chicago started playing it a lot. Ramsey Lewis and uh, a lot of the folks up in, in Chicago. And when I went to play in Ravinia, uh, really promoted this piece of music. And uh, thank you, God, this, the song went to number one in the United States as a result. And I just want to share it with you. It's uh, the biggest ex musical example of the way synergy came together uh, in, my, in my life as far as recorded music. So here it is. This is called Sunny Side Up. Oh, one more thing to add. One thing to add that the uh, people on the track that you're hearing, the bass player is Verdeen White, the bass player with Earth, Wind, and Fire. And the guitarist is the wonderful, magical Al McKay. And Al McKay is the reason I am here, because Al introduced me to Todd. And Todd and I were playing with Al together. And that's how we became friends. So uh, I just thought you should know that little inside track. Al McKay is probably one of the greatest, greatest funky, funky guitar people on the planet. So here it is, Sunny Side Up.
<laughs> oh. I told Mark to get real close to me. I said, don't be shy. He ain't shy. <laughs> I've never had a camera lens so close to my fingers. Thank you, man. That's cool. Um, you know, uh, so there's that, that, that sunny side up. And, and uh, oh. Stop. Down iPod, down iPod. God. What I'd like to do now is do something, uh, you know, I know that we only have about, what, 25 more minutes or so, and uh, I wanted to try one more thing with the audience and, and, and actually put into action all these things we've been discussing. And I'd like to know if there might be three people that would like to volunteer real quickly. Are there three people? Do I have, CJ's there for me, all right. Two more people? Come on up, man. That'd be great. Thank you. You, CJ, I don't know your name. Mel. Mel. Mel? Mel. Melvin. Okay, we got Melvin. We have CJ. Who else? One more person. Somebody else, please. Don't be shy. Come on up, sir. Come on up. All right. Perfect. And what's your name? Cass. Cass. Yeah. All right. Nice to meet you, man. Pleasure. All right. So we have Cass. We have Melvin and we have CJ, all right? I got my group. The bus is outside and we're leaving right now. <laughs> and we're going to do something for you now where we're going to actually create a piece of music right here in this room on the spot, okay? And we've talked about the three elements of music, melody, harmony, and rhythm. Now let me ask you, which one of you would like to represent melody? Are you good with that, Melvin? He's great with that. I can kind of sense that. Yeah, we're going to have Melvin cover melody, right? And which one of you would like to do harmony? That was easy. You cool with some rhythm? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, good. I like it. I like it. So I have Melvin, I have CJ, and Cass. Cass. Ooh, I like that. Cass. <laughs> nice. OK, good. So now we're going to go ahead and create something now. What I'd like to do is let's first of all decide on what kind of piece of music. And when I say piece of music, I'm talking about a four-bar groove, OK? And what we're going to do to help make this groove happen is we've added another part element to the soup, and I call this my Carbondale soup, my gumbo. Unique to this moment right now, this particular day, it'll never happen. It'll never sound like this as it's about to sound. It can only happen with these individuals. We're going to add one more element, which we've never done in a tune-up to success presentation. I am very lucky, lucky to have, is it Kaushek? Yes, Kaushek. Kaushek, right? from Bombay, India, who is uh, the gentleman sitting in the front row at the tablas. Uh, let's have a round of applause for Kaushek. <laughs> Kaushek was gracious enough uh, on the urging of uh, Todd to come on down and jump into the gumbo of music, OK? And uh, we will add his element, which of course is an unexpected element. Uh, but that's what today's talk is about. How are we going to bridge global culture into music and bridge it into humanity, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about the amount. We're gonna play a very short piece of music, maybe four to eight bars long, okay? For a melody, okay? Melody doesn't have to necessarily be sung. It could also be spoken. It could also be a statement of, it could be a sentence long or something. Any particular thoughts that you might feel, Melvin, that comes to you for like a melody? And it could be sung or it could be stated. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? He he ho ho ha ha ho ho. Fantastic. That's unbelievable. Okay? He he ho ho ha ha ho ho. Everyone got that? He he ho ho ha ha ho ho. Thank you, Melvin. We got a hit coming here, <laughs> CJ, as a compliment to that, now we all talked about what harmony is. Harmony is taking the answer to melody. Remember we were talking about the question? Now let's talk about the answer. What might be something that might balance that out that comes to you? Oh, can I hear it easy again? Beautiful. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> It's Christmas time around here. <laughs> hey, hey, ho, ho, hey, hey, ho, ho. So what, would, what might be an answer for that that you feel, CJ? Um, uh, 
Okay, let's go with the two, the two ones. She went, ooh, what did you do? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, let's just make it ooh, 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 ooh. That's it, doesn't even matter what the pitch is for now, okay? So we have he, he, ho, ho, he, he, ho, ho, ooh, 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 ooh. Interesting. Now, what kind of groove are you feeling, Kaz? Man, I feel like getting loose. <laughs> what's getting loose? I mean, just, is it, yeah, what's, what's getting loose? I mean, is it, is it here? Is it the way you walk? Is it the way you clap? Is it the way you dance? It's all of it. It's, it depends on the, the, the beat, really, you know. Is it fast or is it slow? Does it have a lope or is it up-tempo? It's up-tempo. It's up-tempo. Up where's, the, where's the groove? Where's the, the pocket of it? Is it like here? Is it a little it's faster? A little faster. A little faster. Like mm. 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 Everyone feeling that? See, Kaz is feeling it up. Okay, we're going to go with Kaz because he's feeling it up. CJ's feeling the answer of ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, hey. And Melvin's got our hey, hey, ho, ho, okay? Now, just for, just, just, now, now, Cass has this rhythm going on, right? This tempo. Okay, Kasha, what do you feel against this? One, two, three, mm. Everybody, hey, 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 oh, what is it? Hey, hey, ho, ho, hey, hey, ho, ho. Everybody. Very good. It's a smash, everybody. It's a smash. On the top of the charts. Okay. Good. Nice and loud. Nice. Now I want the guys to say, hey, hey, ho, ho. And I want the girls to say, ooh, ooh. One, two. Guys. playing for all of you. My name is Freddie Ravel, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. That's right. Well, Mel Melvin took my music business class. Uh, we have a little time left, so I'd really like to open up for questions for, for Freddie about really anything he's covered or anything he's done over the last 25 years in the business. And also, I would like to, to mention that um, he does have uh, one of his CDs here, Soul to Soul, which is um, a, a blending of uh, at least six different genres that all come together uh, in quite an amazing CD. And does that have Sunnyside up? 
I know that the, the, the last one does. The last one does. Okay. Uh, so um, Tulin in, in the back has uh, Freddie's CDs. Uh, and Freddie has been uh, very generous to also uh, offer a portion of the, the proceeds from the sale of uh, his CDs here today back to the Global Media Research Center. So thank you very much for that. So uh, please uh, open up questions for Freddie. Thank you, Tom. Go ahead, CJ. How did you get your start in the industry? Um, you really want to know the answer to that? Yes. I was seven years old. I was playing in the living room with my fireman pajamas. The doorbell rang, and a man came up to the door with a box in his hand. And I answered the door, and he looked at me and says, Young man, would you like to play the accordion? And I said, What's an accordion? And he says, well, it's a keyboard, you know, and you squeeze it and you play it. And I said, well, I really, I really want to play the organ. Now, this was in the early days when the, those beatboxes, some of the older folks in the crowd may remember, remember when those organs came out? You could push a little button on it and it went, and it said bossa nova on it. You push another button and it said samba on it. And, went, and I thought that was so cool. This, folks, this is pre-drum machine days, OK? That was what it was. I loved the rhythm. I wanted to play that. So the guy looked at me and says, you're a little too short. You won't be able to reach the pedals. Why don't you start on the accordion? Then when you go, grow up a little bit more, then you can go to the organ. So that is what happened. I started playing the accordion at the age of seven until about the age of 10. And then I wanted to be a real normal kid. And I played baseball. And I had a paper route. And I stopped playing music because I just wanted, I didn't want to practice anymore. Then when I was 13, the music bug bit me. I mean, it bit me so intensely that I decided I was going to practice eight hours a day. And I discovered Sergio Mendez and Chick Corea and Herbie Hancock and Beatles music and all kinds of things. It was so rich and so compelling that I couldn't sleep at night unless I was playing music. So in a nutshell, that's how I, I got involved. Next question. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, um, every morning, I, 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 since I was uh, about 10 years ago, I met Deepak Chopra and started working with Deepak Chopra. And uh, in fact, on the record that we have uh, available this, this evening, there's a song that Deepak and I wrote called Slip in the Gap, which is a song about meditation. And uh, not to dwell on meditation, but I get up every morning and I have four things I do every single morning. And I learned this from Deepak. Scrape the tongue. From the Indian, scraping the tongue, okay? Cleaning, the, cleaning out the body. Scrape the tongue. Salute the sun, which is the yoga asana, the 12 yoga asanas. Scrape the tongue. Salute the sun. Breathe. Reverse nostril breathing. In. Out. Every morning I do this. I've been doing this for 10 years. And meditate. Scrape the tongue. Salute the sun. Breathe and meditate. I do it every morning. <coughs> I mean, like, it, and it's easy. I take about five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes. I have a three and a half year old daughter. She does it with me now, okay? Um, in that meditation, in those moments, I kept asking, how do I do what I love to do and, 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 and absolutely in some way find a way that I leave something of value that can help people in some way? How can I do what I love and at the same time, it kind of comes from that quote of Aristotle, everybody, right? Where your talents and the needs of the world intersect, there lies your vocation. And I kept thinking, OK, these are my talents, but where is the world right now? And the world is in a real funky state of chaos. A lot of it is. So how can we take the qualities of music and help people with it? And that's, that's really where it started. And the catalyst for it was about five years ago. My wife, who's a, a former ballerina with the ABT, um, was uh, doing a fundraiser for a school in Santa Monica, California, Los Angeles, and asked me to do a lecture. And I said, honey, I don't speak. I mean, I, I lead bands, and I play in front of lots of people, but I'm not really a speaker speaker. She said, no, 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 you can do this. I know you can do this. You're, you're a ham. That'll be easy <laughs> for you. So that's how it happened. 
and I, I did some fundraisers, and out of those fundraisers, um, I started getting invitations to speak at Pepperdine University, to speak at USC, the colleges in Los Angeles. And then we started doing this for corporate markets. And we did a, uh, we launched a program in 2002 called Tune Up to Success, which uses the tuning fork as the center, and that whole idea of what I shared with you today. So uh, Tune Up to Success and FreddieRavel.com, those two places will give you a lot more information about what this is. But we now have speakers bureaus in England, in South Africa, about 30 bureaus in the United States that represent the program. And um, we're going out and getting in front of Walmart, getting in front of Smith Barney Bank, getting in front of Panasonic, and getting in front of groups this size and, and quite, a, quite a bit larger, up to 500 people, and bringing this paradigm into listening skills. Because it turns out that listening is at the heart of almost everything. Negotiations, sales. What we're talking about today, everybody, is not just about the cultural benefits of it, but absolutely the way progress can happen, the art of listening. So it's kind of a long answer, but that's how it all started. Any other questions? Yes? Well, the genres of music that you're doing, and they, the audiences seem to be so divided or so polarized. How do you see your audiences receiving this music? I mean, I thought when you did the flip hop thing, I thought about Herbie Hancock's Rock It. How yeah. his original audience would have been like, Whoa. What is hip-hop then? So how do you think the audiences are going to be able to make that transition with the music? Um, I, I am very optimistic. I'm very optimistic. I think, that, uh, I think that there's a lot of new genres that are just waiting to happen. And uh, I think flip-hop is, I'm, I'm hoping that it is something that can kind of break through into sort of a new sound. Uh, I don't know of another piece of music right now that has uh, for all your music people, Phrygian scales, which are what a lot of Spanish music is built on, labeled, you know, Phrygian is this. That sound? Spain. Guitar. With flip, with a hip hop beat. I, I don't know of anything out there like that. Um, and I thought, let's just take two really different cultures and put them together. And I, ne I, I think a lot, of, a lot of it for me is that I grew up not seeing a radical difference. I grew up, I'm somewhat of a Heinz 57 in the, in the fullest sense of the word. I mean, my mother is from Colombia, South America, from Cali, which is the third largest city in Colombia, and grew up was, grew up, went to school in a convent, raised by nuns, Catholic, all the way, Spanish, came to Los Angeles, met my father. I was born two years later. She didn't speak any English. So I grew up learning Spanish first before I learned English. So I grew up in that whole Latin Spanish soup. My dad, Russian, German, Polish, born in the Bronx, you know, raised by a Jewish mama, you know, bar mitzvah, you know, uh, matzo ball soup. <laughs> so Hanukkah and Christmas at the same time? No problem. <laughs> why not? I kind of grew up with that, why not? Why, why not? You know, why not mix this and that? Why not? It all works. And I think that coupled with sort of the whole spiritual journey I've been pursuing and, and trying to learn more and more about kept making me realize, especially through touring the world a great deal and being around the world many times, um, it, it led me to the conclusion that all human beings need the same thing. We all want the same thing. We all basically need love. We need respect. You know, we need our we need common freedoms. We all need, you know, the golden rules of life. Don't judge, you know, do unto others as others do unto you. Basic stuff that almost all, you know, all the religious teachings, all the spiritual teachings teach. They basically all say the same thing. So, uh, and music is the glue, in my opinion, that can actually stick all these things together in a very positive way. Music is, is, is a way to speak beyond some of the boundaries that we see. So that has, that has an awful lot to do with the reason I like to blend styles, personally. Any other questions? Yes? Um, so this question is kind of about blending people. Uh, I'm in a, a band with a lot of pretty relatively new musicians who are sort of finding their feet on their instruments and sometimes appear to be coming from different universes entirely. <laughs> 
And um, I don't know, do you have any, you're working with all the top people, so you probably don't have this issue, but is, do you have any ways of like tuning people into each other, just like you're tuning up? Like, is there a way that you can get people who may be coming from different places, different ideas, and at least getting on the same page to start getting a, a groove going, getting something, you know, harmonious happening? Uh, you know, uh, I think the, uh one possible way to look at that is, you know, you find what everyone's really good at. Like, that whole thing about melody, what, you know, you have four members of your band. One guy plays great rock guitar, but he's not real good at rhythm. So he gets, to, he gets the nice distorted sound, he, he gets that really overdrive kind of quality. You have a drummer who uh, can play two grooves really well. <laughs> and you find where to, where to take their fortes and illuminate them. And then the more talented people, the people that are more versatile, I should say, uh, they're the people that can actually color the music deeper for you. And you'll get to a point, as you strive for betterment in your band, where you realize the limitations of the people, okay? And then you may have to ask them to step up to the plate and learn more things so that they keep growing. Because the last thing you want is a stagnant band. You want to constantly be pushing. I think the little exercise we did here uh, with Melvin, CJ, and Kaz, and, and Kaushik, I mean, uh, these are all brand new people. I've, I've, we've never met, you know? But uh, they were all willing, they had the willingness to get in front of a, a group of people and just contribute. There was a spirit of con contribution there. And a lot of it is, I, I, I do my best to sort of guide a little bit and get out of the way. And I think that's a lot of it, is, is point people and then step back. That's a lot of it, too. Sure. Any other questions? OK. It's been a great honor to play, play for you, to speak for you. I, I'm, I feel like I have a new family here in Carbondale. Thank you very much for inviting me.